Welcome everyone to Self-Care in Stressful Times. My name is Kelly Grimes and I am the Director of Community Engagement for Leap to Success. This is our 25th episode uh, of doing these community Zoom calls as an opportunity to share what we teach to our participants of Leap to Success and to share with the community different tools and strategies to deal with this challenging time. I want to uh, let you know that I will be your solo host today um, as Dana, our executive director, is off for the day. Um, and what we really have been exploring in September is navigating uncertainty. And what we know when times are unsettled and we are navigating um, an unknown world, um, that there are loss and disappointments that come up. So today we are going to explore dealing with loss and disappointment. We know that as individuals and organizations and as the community and even the nation, we've experienced many losses and disappointments as the result of this pandemic. Many of us have had our daily routines upended. We've lost our ability to safely engage in normal activities of life. And we've sadly missed many celebrations and life transitions and other things um, due to our need to socially distance for safety. So we wanna look today at how to navigate this time, look at some tools to really be able to um, feel um, the experience of the loss and um, disappointments as we move through to giving meaning to them and um, in essence, giving meaning to the transition that we're in. So I would like to invite now Alyssa, who is our amazing tech support here for these uh, webinars. Alyssa, would you share um, a welcome and any support you can give people? Hey everyone, thank you for joining us for episode 25 of Self-Care in Stressful Times. Um, as always, if there are episodes that you'd like to rewatch or that you've missed, we have all of those recordings available for you on our web, uh, our YouTube, as well as our website. I'll be posting links for those replays in the chat. And also, we now have on our website a uh, page where you can go and register for all of the self-care and stressful times upcoming in the month of September. So if you want to check out the topics that we'll be speaking about or if you want to pre-register and get your spot early, we have that for you and I'll put that in the chat as well. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you so much, Alyssa. So I want to share a little bit about what we do at Leap to Success. In case this is your first time, your first episode with us, I want to let you know that our mission is to educate and empower women who are overcoming domestic violence, homelessness, and many other major life challenges to reach their greatest potential. So the women that we work with are absolutely in transition and they're putting into practice all of these tools that we are teaching here in these webinars in order to have confidence and belief in themselves again to take empowered next steps. And we started this um, series 25 weeks ago at the beginning of the pandemic really as a way to give back and support our amazing community partners um, and our community and our Leap to Success community and donors just to give back and, and provide some more ways of staying grounded um, in this uncertainty and um, knowing that we are part of something bigger than ourselves, that we're part of a community of people that are cultivating resilience in order um, to manage all of the difficult times that we're in right now. So I thank you. I thank you for taking time for yourself. I thank you for taking time to be here with us. And I hope that you will participate. I have some questions and some other things for you that I hope that you'll be able to um, share your responses. What I always say to uh, the, the group of women that I work with is the wisdom rises in the room. So I hope that you will see yourself as part of this Zoom webinar room and share your wisdom with us today. I want to start by inviting us in to a mindfulness practice. We begin each of our sessions this way, knowing that mindfulness is such a powerful way of connecting with ourselves, the present moment, and decreasing stress and overwhelm at any time. So I invite you to settle in, if you would, feel your feet on the ground, and then if you're comfortable, close your eyes or just settle them down so you're not getting a lot of visual stimulation. And now let's take three full body breaths in and out. Good. 
As you breathe in, you can notice how it feels to fill up your lungs. As you breathe out, you can notice how it feels to exhale, how it feels for the air to be going through your nose. Just really giving yourself permission to arrive and settle in where you are. Feel the seat underneath you and just be reminded that you're supported by that. In this moment, you're supported just to allow yourself to relax and notice what's showing up with curiosity and non-judgment. I invite you to bring awareness to your body now. See if there's any place that you're holding any tension or tightness in this moment. Notice if there's anywhere that you have any pain or discomfort. And scanning your body, notice if there's some place or places in your body that you do not have any sensation at all. Now that you are connected with your body, I want to invite you to think about any sense of loss or disappointment that you're experiencing in this time. Perhaps you had plans that got canceled. Perhaps it's a loss if you have children that they haven't returned to school in the normal way they would have. Perhaps you haven't been able to see a friend or a family member and you feel sadness and loss about that. Tune into that and check in to where you experience that emotion in your body. For some, they may feel a heaviness in their chest. For others, they may feel a feeling of unsettlement in their stomach. Notice for you where sadness and disappointment shows up in your body. And when you notice it, just acknowledge it. Maybe breathe a little bit deeper to that spot, allowing there to be some expansiveness allowing there to be a little bit more space around that feeling. Notice, if you will, what are your thoughts doing right now that you're connected to this feeling of loss and disappointment? If you can observe your thoughts with curiosity and non-judgment, what do you notice? There's so much wisdom and insight that resides both in our thoughts, in our bodies, in our emotions. It's just a lot of information for ourselves to know what's happening, what our experience is. It doesn't have to define us. It's not permanent for sure. Feelings, thoughts, sensations, they move in and out. But acknowledging them and affirming how we're feeling is a beautiful tool of self-nurturing. It's a beautiful way that we can support ourselves in this time of uncertainty, in this time of change. So I invite you to breathe deeply, really breathe and allow your breath to fill you up. And then if you wish, you could just, as you exhale, just allow those feelings of sadness and disappointment just to be exhaled out. Breathing in a sense of spaciousness and possibility and hope. And breathe out that loss and disappointment. And I invite you to place your hand on your heart and just remind yourself that in this moment, all is well. 
that you are supported, that you have the resources both within yourself and the support in your community to remind yourself that you're well in this moment. Let's take three more breaths together, knowing that we are interconnected, that we're never alone, that we have support within ourselves and within our families and communities, and that that is such a powerful resource that we have access to all the time. Breathing in and out. And maybe when we breathe in, can breathe in all is well. And as we exhale, all is well. And now allow your eyes to float open. And we'd be so grateful if you would share with us what kind of loss or disappointment have you experienced recently? What, what have you experienced? I think that um, in this time of social distancing and isolation, we sometimes can feel really disconnected. Um, and so I think to name what losses we've experienced and then I'm gonna share them, what I find powerful about that is that then we'll know we are not alone. We are not alone, and um, that sometimes can be the comfort that we need um, to be reminded. Um, so if you would share any loss um, or disappointment that you've experienced, um, as I said, it could be that you had plans that got canceled um, with this. It could be, I know um, for folks that may have really enjoyed the whole um, aspect of having kids get ready to go back to school and you know for many people that didn't happen um, someone shared um, a loss of not being able to be with family who is out of town so that loss of ability to travel and and um, go and see people I know people feel that loss of ability to, to hug um, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm a huge hugger and I feel such sadness and loss at not being able to greet people with a hug. Um, some other things being shared were two big celebration trips canceled. I've heard that from people, you know, big birthday celebrations or graduation celebrations and, and other things and just the feeling of, of sadness and disappointment in those being postponed or, or put off altogether. Another person shared a loss of traveling with her husband, um, a loss of, of friends because of the political climate and all of the polarization and division. Um, uh, others, a feeling of loss and disappointment, concerned about their son's mental wellness and well-being and maybe not being able to travel and see them or be connected in the same way. Um, other feeling, others feeling loss and disappointment, um, just in general. And, and I think that's really important. I'm so grateful that that person just identified that because that's the fact is there may be just a general feeling of this because not only are we experiencing that, but people that we love are and our community members are. Um, there's certainly loss and, and devastation that people have experienced with hurricanes and storms and, and the fires. So we know that those are on grand scales and then they're on smaller scales um, with just our whole routine and way of life disrupted. Another person saying that they miss hugging and smiling um, and having um, to smile at people to connect when we're all masked up. Um, and that that is. So I really appreciate you sharing um, those. And I, and I hope that was helpful to other people and to hear um, that if you're experiencing some of those disappointments and loss, you're not alone. Um, and, um, you know, we hear again, definitely missing hugs. Um, uh, and, and even I've heard from people just missing handshakes, missing a physical connection in this time of social distancing. So acknowledging that, that these are unprecedented and challenging times. And so how can we deal with it? Um, I feel like it's such a powerful um, way to approach things is what do I have control over? What do I have control over and how can I really deal with it without rejecting and ignoring it? 
So I want to talk about cultivating resilience. We've talked about cultivating resilience. And what I love in the work that we get to do in Leap to Success is we have models all over the place of resilience, people overcoming difficulties and, and seeing that they have the strength and resources and, and um, capabilities to manage whatever is coming. And so part of building resilience is um, recognizing what we're going through, um, coming from this place of gratitude for what's good in our lives, as well as um, um, what is difficult. So going through the feelings and pain of things, um, and then exploring the process of grieving and, and coming to the other side of things. So we've learned a lot uh, about resilience from Sheryl Sandberg and Adam Grant. They wrote a wonderful book called Option B, Facing Adversity, Building Resilience, and Finding Joy. And Cheryl wrote this uh, after her husband died unexpectedly during a vacation. And um, she went through a process of learning to cultivate uh, resilience and really wanted to share that. And so Adam Grant and she wrote this book. And I really appreciate the way they define resilience because this is an important um, uh, lens with which to see what we're going through. And they define it as resilience is the strength and speed of our response to adversity and we can build it. It isn't about having backbone, it's about strengthening the muscles around our backbone. So it's a practice, it's a process, just like self-care and self-nurturing, it's a practice of doing these um, different activities, and I want to offer a few of them uh, to you. I'm going to share that uh, Michelle Obama wrote that grief and resilience live together, and indeed they do. Um, and that part of the process of building resilience is to acknowledge what we're going through. So I asked you to do that, and that may have been difficult for some of you in the meditation today. Um, you know, oftentimes we do meditations where we're really, um, you know, checking in and then allowing ourselves to, to release some of the stress and the overwhelm. So I just want to you know, name that it may have brought up stress for you in acknowledging the loss and the disappointment. And um, as a counselor for over 30 years, I would just say, I feel like that's so incredibly important that we build capacity for that and trust and belief in ourselves around that. So indeed loss and, and grief and disappointment, they're all part of navigating transitions and building resistance. As we learn to let go of what was, so that we can begin defining what we're becoming. So there's going to be loss in that, right? There's going to be those disappointments. And although experiencing them are natural, they can also impact our confidence, right? They can impact our, our you know, maybe belief that everything's going to be okay if we start to think, you know, I feel so overwhelmed by this loss or this disappointment and what it, what it might mean about about myself. And it can cause a sense of feeling unsettled. And I think that the person that was saying um, earlier when I asked, you know, what, what sense of loss or disappointment they said they couldn't really specify, I think it's that sense of feeling unsettled. And I don't know if others of you have experienced that, but definitely during this last, you know, five, six months of COVID, I have certainly felt at times this sense of unsettlement and things being so different and yet not having a new normal. Um, so I just want to assert that how we treat ourselves as we're navigating loss and disappointment is crucial. This is what we have control of. This is what we can really bring that sense of nurturing and care for ourselves in that. So I'm going to invite all of us to choose to respond to ourselves when we are noticing loss and disappointment with self-compassion noticing how healing self-compassion can be, and that it really is a fundamental piece of building resilience. So if you are wondering how self-compassionate you are to yourself, I want you to invite, I want to invite you to think about uh, the loss or disappointment that you identified. Now check in with yourself and notice how you speak to yourself about that. When you hear, when you start thinking about that, and we heard, you know, missing hugs and, and missing trips and missing other things, um, you know, anything that was important to you that may have gotten canceled or postponed, etc. When you think of that, I want you to check in with yourself and see 
did you speak to yourself with a kind, compassionate and understanding way? Or did you disregard how you were feeling and told yourself, well, it could be so much worse. And so you have no right to feel that way. Or there's other people that are suffering so much. So you have no right to feel the sadness about not getting to hug or whatever it is. Check in with yourself about that. And I don't think it's all or nothing. I think that, that we can certainly have some compassionate response and we can open to more compassionate response. So check in with yourself and notice. How do you respond to yourself when you have a loss or disappointment? Do you ignore it? Do you reject those feelings? Or do you respond to yourself with tenderness and kindness like you would a dear friend? That's what we wanna to start to cultivate. We wanna to start to cultivate this very loving relationship with ourselves that gives ourselves permission to feel what we feel. Now, that whole thing of, of giving ourselves perspective can be a useful strategy later on in building resilience. But if we do it right away, if we say, well, other people have it so much worse, so we don't have a right to our feelings, what happens is we don't process the feelings. And then we ignore or deny them or whatever. And they always seem to arise in another place. Sometimes they arise as pain in our bodies. Other times they arise as something triggered that has nothing to do with that situation. But all this wave of emotion comes up because we didn't attend to it. So I love the arrival technique, um, that modified version I did for our mindfulness practice or any mindfulness practice. It could be the strategy of stop. STOP stands for stop, take a breath, observe what's going on, and then proceed. Anything that we do to notice what's going on in ourselves can be so incredibly important. And it's how we can uh, approach ourselves when we're suffering with compassion. But we need to check in. Um, sometimes if we're having trouble doing that for ourselves, we can reach out. Right? We can reach out to someone compassionate and kind who can remind us how to do that. Somebody who can say to us, oh, I hear you're suffering. You know, I see what you're going through. So I'm really going to encourage us to find ways to respond to ourselves with self-compassion during this time. And um, there is, um, I think, a sense sometimes that if we allow ourselves to connect to the feelings, maybe they'll grow and they'll be bigger and bigger. So maybe if we just keep them, in, you know, in a compartment or toned down, um, then we won't suffer so much. But my experience is that, that feelings, just like thoughts, just like sensations in our bodies, they come and go. And when we pay attention to them through mindfulness, we can actually notice that they don't define us. They aren't forever. And when we do that over time, we learn to trust ourselves. We learn to trust what we feel as information versus as our identity. Because I'm feeling sad today does not mean I am sadness, right? It means I'm feeling sad today. And maybe I won't be feeling sad all day. Maybe it'll be as I'm attending to, you know, thinking about what my loss and disappointment is. And then at, at other times, I'll be feeling something else. So really having, um, starting to trust ourselves that we have the capability to feel things um, and that they will move through. Now, I love some other tools to help the process. And one of my favorite tools and Alyssa's favorite tool is journaling. Journaling can be so supportive when we're navigating loss and disappointment because it gives us a place to write down how we're feeling and we can acknowledge and affirm that. It can help us make sense of the past, and it can help us um, rebuild and have confidence for the present. If I can read back and I can see how I've managed, you know, loss and, and disappointments and grief in the past, it gives me courage and kind of the reinforcement that I can do it now and I can do it today. So giving yourself, um, you know, uh, permission to write once a day. I know some people do three um, morning pages. Um, other people might journal in the afternoon. It doesn't matter whether you do it electronically or written or however it best serves you. It's giving yourself permission to do that. It's acknowledging that you are important and that your feelings are important and to write them down gives you an opportunity to acknowledge them. Um, it also um, gives us an opportunity to acknowledge them without making them our identity. 
So Pema Chodron, who is a fabulous Buddhist nun and author, uh, meditation teacher, sh she has this um, perspective of sitting on a park bench and inviting in whatever the strong emotion is, the sadness, the loss, the pain, allow it to sit on the park bench next to you. Just don't build a memorial to it, right? So again, these different ways of looking at how we can honor how we're feeling and acknowledge ourselves without having it be our identity. Um, I believe that the more that we check in with ourselves and the more we see that it's ever moving and uh, that there's a process of that, um, that also gives us more belief and trust in ourselves that we are okay. That putting our hand on our heart and reminding ourselves that in this moment, even with whatever loss and disappointment that you're experiencing, that you're okay that all is well, all is well is one of the, the uh, mantras that I have used myself, um, just to remind myself that even with very strong emotions that I'm okay and that I can trust myself to have them. Now, over time, as we do this incredible work, of checking in with ourselves, being curious, seeing what's um, um, coming up for us, allowing ourselves to have emotions and, and other things and learning from them and, and other things, we can start to have more and more trust built, and then we can start rebuilding confidence that's been undermined by loss and disappointment. And one way um, that Sheryl Sandberg and Adam Grant share is to write for five to 10 minutes a day about what went well in your day and why. A recent study showed that doing this can actually lower our stress levels and our mental and physical health complaints um, within three weeks. So just having a practice of doing this, we've talked about acknowledging ourselves before, and this is very specific to really refocusing us, particularly if we're feeling, you know, um, that w there is a lot of loss and disappointment and grief, to be able to shift and see what is going well and why. How are we a part of that? Counting our contributions can boost our confidence and expand our perspective on life. Even if your thing was, I made my bed today, or I got out of bed today, that moves us forward and able to recognize what empowered choices that we're making. And I know from working with lots of people that have had chronic health challenges, getting out of bed is no easy feat. It is no easy feat also when you're grieving and when you're struggling with loss and disappointment. So acknowledge what it is for you. What is something that you have done right now? Acknowledge something that you've done that went well and why it went well. Give yourself the gift of building resilience in an ongoing way, knowing that, that we are in this for a while, right? The pandemic isn't just going to be over tomorrow. And even if it wasn't the pandemic, friends, there are always challenges in life. There are always transitions in life. And there are always um, times that we need to remind ourselves that we can get back up when we've been knocked down by life and that we can keep going in a really empowered and confident and, and loving and nurturing way. The final practice I want to share with you um, today is if you've had somebody that's been supportive to you while you've been navigating a difficult transition or loss or disappointment, um, you could write a thank you note to them. And what this does is it helps us move away a bit from our sadness focus on something else, and also spread kindness and love in the world. So feel like we're doing something to make the world um, a better place. And I know that that can be such a powerful healing element. So that, those are some options for you um, to deal with uh, your, your disappointment and loss. And I'm wondering, what is one action that you can take to deal with loss and disappointment? I would be so grateful if you could share that and then I could share that with the group. What's one thing um, that you are going to do? One action step. Sometimes it can be really, really helpful because then we know kind of um, an inspired action to take from what we've learned. And when we can do that, when we can take action after we've learned something, I feel like it, um, I don't know, it continues the momentum and the forward movement around it. So one person shared that they're going to acknowledge themselves daily. And I think that that's so incredibly 
empowering, and it's so loving and so nurturing. Another person's going to acknowledge the feelings rather than the stuff, uh, than stuff, or to ignore feelings altogether, to, so to acknowledge them. And I do think it takes courage. And if we haven't done it in a while, we can do it in small ways. We don't have to, you know, have huge expansive of feeling things, but we can start to pay attention. What am I feeling right now? What's going on? Another person shared that they're going to start a journal of their accomplishments to shift their mindset um, day to day and moment to moment. And that's beautiful. And what I love about a journal is you can keep going back to it, right? So it becomes a resource to you in an ongoing way. Another person said that um, they're going to thank their sister for being um, there for, for them during a painful time. That's really beautiful. Um, and another person said, yes, acknowledge feelings and in my body. I am so grateful for all of these things that you've shared. Um, the, the last thing I'll share is someone shared that they're going to contribute to an organization that's carried me through so much, LEAP, um, and, and to demonstrate their gratitude. Just beautiful just beautiful. So there's a quote that I love. And the quote is, keep walking through the storm. Your rainbow is waiting on the other side. And that is Heather Still, Still Fusen. Um, and I love that because the fact is, friends, that we're going to have strong feelings. We're going to have feelings of loss and disappointment. We couldn't not. Our worlds have been turned upside down. But we have an ability to be our own dear friend. We have our ability to care for ourselves and nurture ourselves through it and to remember that the rainbow is waiting on the other side. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And Alyssa, we're so grateful. And we hope to see you next week on Zoom, on Facebook Live, um, or in some other way that we get to connect with this beautiful community. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your way, week. Be safe and well, friends. Thank you.